Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to give you my five best tips to shoot in the middle of the night. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful cities of Paris, France. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm back in Paris and I want to show you something I did a couple of days ago where I went to shoot Paris in the middle of the night. There's a few rules or tips and tricks I would like to share with you. Here we go. All right, guys, just before we get started into this tutorial, I just want to show you a magazine that I found on the web that I really love. It's called Clarity. And basically what it is, it's, uh, it's a photographic magazine. Uh, it's a lot on Lightroom with uh, amazing uh, tips. And reading magazines has always been very successful for me over the, over the years because it's a, it's a source of inspiration and it's a source of you know, tips and tricks. And this one is really amazing. I mean, the work they put into it is crazy. Uh, there is no ad. It's only articles about Lightroom, uh, photographic tricks. Like some of them are very advanced. You know, some of them are not. Uh, it's just, you know, really, really cool stuff. I mean, it's probably one of the best magazine I've read out there on, on photography. I really like it. It's really well done. It's only a PDF that you can download. But man, did they put a, some work into it. It's really, really cool. And um, so I asked them if I could make a deal for you guys, for people that follows me, and, and, they, and they did. If you go to my page on Photo Surge and you click here on my gear, you'll see magazine. And if you click that link, you will be able to get uh, five issues for about 30 bucks instead of 40 bucks. And really for the work they put into it, it's, it's a steal. It's a really cool deal. So just wanted to give you, if you're looking for inspiration of new techniques, photography, Lightroom, so many stuff, check out the Clarity magazine. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, shooting in the middle of the night. Now, shooting in the middle of the night is something I hadn't done for years. And uh, in Paris, a, th a couple of days ago, there was, um, I was looking up at the sky and, I and, uh, and the, the moon was not full, but almost full. And uh, there were some clouds. So there were some details in the sky and I really wonder if I could capture that. You know, I only shoot like at the blue hour, golden hour, sunset. But I thought, you know, why not shoot in the middle of the night? And I want to give you five of my best tips for shooting in the middle of the night. Now we're talking like midnight. We're talking midnight and which is really cool in Paris because you can make a lot of photos. Usually when I, the problem is when I shoot at sunset or the golden hour uh, or the, you know, it, it is so short, this, this type of light. It's a very nice light. But the downside is you can only take one photo or two photos because by the time you move to the next location, even in Paris, when they are like just next to each other, uh, it's gone. You know, the, the, that time has passed. So the key point and my tip number one is uh, watch for the, um, the clouds. Uh, make sure you have clouds and make sure that the moon is, uh, is in a not full moon, but getting close. I mean, full moon would be perfect because the moon is going to reflect again the clouds and make a bright sky. If you got no clouds or no moon, it's not going to work. You're just going to get a peach black sky and that's not really interesting. So that's my tip number one. Now, to find out what phase of the moon is, I highly recommend uh, Photo Calc, which I've talked about uh, because it gives you the sunset, but it also gives you the phase of the moon. And you will find a link to this iPhone, iPad and Android app in the description of this video. Okay, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, let's do some retouching. Tip number two is more about the white balance. I think the biggest difficulty when you shoot in the middle of the night and uh, is the white balance. Now, this is a default white balance, which I was sh shooting with. I think I went on to tungsten or something. Uh, if you go to daylight, it's going to be too warm, too yellow. If you go to cloudy, it's going to be even too yellow. If you go to shade, it's going to be crazy yellow. Now, if you go to tungsten, it's going to be better. Uh, but I don't really like the, 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 you know, the how it looks. And if you go to fluorescent, fluorescent is the one I like the most. But I like to, you know, I like to play around. So usually what I do is I go to fluorescent and then I play around with the, uh, with the blue, try to add a bit warm, take some off, you know, find a, and play around like this also. Um, I don't like when there's too much yellow. So, okay, that's something I would go for. But here is the trick of the day. 
if you're not satisfied with your white balance, I highly advise you go down to camera calibration because there you have many more options where you can, you know, play around with the colors and the white balance of your photo. For example, uh, if you go to shadows here, you have a tint. If you go here on the left, all your shadows is going to be very green. If you go on the right, it's going to be very magenta. If you double click, you put it back in the middle. So I'm going to, I'm going to add a little bit of magenta in the shadows because I am crazy about magenta, as you know. Okay. Red primary, same thing. Let's go on the left here. It's going to be very purple here on the right. It's going to be very, um, well, yellow. So on this one, I think I would add a little bit of yellow. Okay, and you can add on a red primary, you can add saturation, you can, I can make that yellow even stronger. So you can really like sort of fine tune uh, your white balance like, you know, uh, a lot more than just using the preset above. Okay, green primary here on the left, a lot of green and here a lot of magenta. So on this one, I would put it a little bit more on the right. Okay, blue primary. So just go to the extreme and see how they look, you know. Okay, on this one, then add a little bit here or a little bit there. I think I'm going to make this whole thing a bit warmer. Something like this. So let's see, without the camera calibration, before, after. I kind of warm up every, you know, warmed up everything, but more with reds. It's a different warm up than just adding magenta. At this point, maybe I would take, yeah, take some blue out. I mean, it's not the, you know, it's not a huge deal, but anyways. So that's the, the, the thing. Then the next thing I would do is open up the shadows. Now check that out and bring down the highlights. Okay. And then um, I white. Okay. I hold on the, the shift key. And uh, now this is a trick I want to show you. Some, somebody wrote me an email and says, if you press shift and you double click on the white, it's going to set your white point automatically. Same thing on the black points, I believe. Uh, no, it's not working on the black point. Let me see why, because you probably, oh yeah. Yeah, the problem with, with this technique of shift and double clicking is that it's basically gonna stop when it starts seeing some dots, which I don't necessarily want. Like on night photo, I'm gonna go a bit further here. And on the blacks, I'm gonna go a little bit further there. Okay, maybe I'm gonna make the whole thing a bit brighter. Now, on the highlights on this one, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to bring back some of the highlights, yeah. Uh, maybe bring down the exposure. You just have to play around and find something that you like. Because if you bring down the highlights, it gets all the halos out of, uh, of this out. So on this one, I would not bring down the highlights. Okay, and then um, clarity, maybe a little minus clarity. Vibrance, I wouldn't touch because it's already very colorful. And uh, sharpening, let's do, the, let's do the sharpening. Let's look here at 100%. This was shot with the Sony S7S, I believe at 100 ISO. Yes, I was on a tripod. So sharpening on this one, I think I'm going to put it to about 100. And it's very noiseless, and I'll explain you why there's not much noise. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to put this as 100 and do my masking. Yeah, uh, masking up around 20 so that it only sharpens the thing. And maybe just a little bit like 10% of noise, noise reduction and maybe 90 you know, I have this rule. Well, I take the number 100, whatever I put in noise reduction, I deduct from the sharpening. Now, why is that? It's just because I decided so one day. There's no real reason. It's just a formula which has worked for me and making nice prints. Okay, uh, then let's continue. And about the profile of correction, remove chromatic aberration and do the auto. Okay, on this one, I think I'm going to go here and I'm going to reset the cropping. I'm going to take the angle, make sure my bridge is very straight. Voila. And I'm going to lower this so, to make it a bit more panoramic. Okay. So we have like sort of two thirds of water, one third of sky, but it's still kind of nice and panoramic. Okay. So that's my trick. Number two was just the way you play around with the white balance. You have more options than just this. You have all the options here in camera, camera calibration. Tip number three, noise reduction, not noise reduction. Um, this is something I don't like to do, but boy, does it work well. On all your camera, you have an option called the noise reduction for lone exposure. And what it does is that once it takes your photo, it's going to basically put it against a black background for the same amount of time it took the photo. 
and it's going to reduce the noise in the camera in the raw file and the result is amazing i mean it's it's going to give you like a noiseless photo like especially when you do middle of the night you really have to have that option on so that was my tip number three put your noise reduction on in your camera it's going to double your exposure times but it's going to give you a much nicer result okay now uh once i've retouched this photo i have this photo which is uh so this was this is like the conciergerie i love this photo because i i shot this a couple of years back and it became the cover of my book because i love the light uh, of the cars here and that beautiful building which is the police basically headquarters uh, in paris and and the sand and and voila it's uh i believe it's a 15 second exposure at f16 uh, and i'm going to talk to you why it's at f16 in a second just want to show you four other photos this one is um is the Pont Neuf bridge taken from the Pont des Arts, a very classic shot of Paris. So this is the row on retouch. This is the Pont des Arts, beautiful bridge. This is what they call the lock bridge because there is like a thousand of locks, you know, that has been put on the bridge. And you know, the idea is that as long as your the lock is there and you've put it with your girlfriend or your your wife, uh, your love will stay forever. It's a very nice romantic concept. The problem is that. Uh, it started to have so many logs that it was going to break down. So they added some uh, very ugly wooden protection on the bridge. Anyways, that's the Pont des Arts, beautiful bridge. And that's again the Pont Neuf. Now, usually what I do is once I'm happy with one of the retouching, I'm just going to select all photos. I'm going to click on sync and synchronize. And it's going to basically synchronize everything. Um, or oh, actually one thing I shouldn't have. Well, I should not have synchronized the cropping. So what I should have done is this. I should have clicked on synchronize and take the cropping off and then click on synchronize uh, because the cropping is very personal to every photo. But on this one, I can actually like the cropping. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I actually like the cropping, what it did. Make sure that the bridge is very straight. Voila. Uh, I think the highlights is a bit strong maybe on this one, so I would lower it a little bit, but I kind of like, like the colors. There is details in the sky, so that's kind of cool. This one, the cropping is off also. So you just have to, uh, you know, make sure. But, you know, it does most of the job is to synchronize. But that's not the tip that I want to make sure this is straight. Voila. And, uh, but that's not the tip what I wanted to give you. The next tip I wanted to talk to you about, and that's something I've talked often here, is shooting uh, in the night over F13 compared to F4. Uh, when you shoot now, this is two photos. Let me press command D and take this one back. This is two photos. This photo was shot at F4 ISO 100, 1.3 second, okay? And this, so let me just lower, because it's a bit too bright. I'm gonna lower the exposure a little bit, okay? And this photo was shot at 20 second of exposure at F20. Now, what's the difference? Well, let me show them. I'm gonna select both and press C. So you can see next to each other. Uh, the difference is when you are over F13, check, this is the F13 version, and this is the F4 version. Look at the lamps. Look how you get a starlight effect around the lamps, which you get here a lot less at F4. You have it here a little bit, but look at on this one. Starlight's everywhere. Now look at the water. Because we've got a 20 second exposure, the water is a lot more silky, and here it is, uh, it's not as light as silky. Uh, the cars, are more invisible here than here, although, although this is not so bad. And look, the light is just generally just nicer. So it's not a huge deal, but uh, um, try to close your aperture, even if it's in the middle of the night, it will give you something nicer. And uh, I really want to show you the same photo. Uh, again, This look at these two lamps, F4, F20. So you get this very starlight effect, which I think are very pleasing, but that's a personal test. You may l hate let me show you in big. This is, look, this is F20, F4, F20, F4, F20, F4. You get the concept. Okay, and so that was tip number four. Tip number five, and that's a very important one, is play around with car lights. When you're shooting in the middle of the night, you really have, you know, if you have cars passing by, it makes this amazing light of like trail. Of course, this, this is why I shot this at F15, uh, sorry, F16, so I can get at least 15 seconds of exposure 
and 50 seconds exposure gave me this nice light, you know, light trails. The water is pretty silky. So play around with cars, find composition like this where you have some, it, it's gonna give you like, a, you know, guiding lines. It's gonna give a third dimension to your photo and it's gonna give a light quality to your photo. So that's my five tips again. One, shoot when the moon and the clouds are present. Two, play around with the camera calibration for your white balance. Three, play around with the noise reduction on your camera. Four, try to shoot over F13 to get the starlight effect on your, on your lamps. And five, play around with car lights. So that was my five best tips on shooting in the middle of the night. Voilà, mesdames et messieurs, and back to me. All right, mesdames et messieurs, I hope you like this. And if you have any ideas or suggestions of tutorials you want me to do, just leave a comment under the video. Thank you so much for being there, and I'll see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.